What is good, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the WMU Football Dynasty here on MPB Gaming on YouTube. It is your boy, MPB, and I hope you are ready for some Bronco football, because you know I am. Today, we have the home opener of the series as the 1-0 Western Michigan Broncos, coming off a massive victory in Ann Arbor, Michigan, are trying to avoid a letdown at home. San Jose State is 1-0 themselves, coming off a 23-3 victory against FCS West. Sounds pretty weak to me. And as we all know, the Broncos are coming off that high against Michigan. 17 to 10, the victory in the big house. Now, one thing that I want to address real quick is that, that to me, playing that game and editing that game, it felt a little bit fast. And so for that very reason, I will actually be extending from this point forward that we are going to have quarters at seven minutes instead of six. I figured with the pace of play that we have, as well as some other opponents that we might face, I might as well provide the opportunity for the Broncos to be on the field more. That way we will score more touchdowns. Quite frankly, we will allow more touchdowns, but I'm cool with that because it just adds to the realism. So that's right, we will have 28 minutes of game clock to work with on a weekly basis moving forward. So boom, there is the update. Seven minute quarter length. We are still on all Heisman and still have the same settings as before. I am entirely open to, by the way, just putting all the CPU settings up to 50. So let me know in the comments if you'd rather see that, if you'd rather see that default gameplay on Heisman. Like I've said before, I want this to be as user-friendly as possible. I want this to be as immersive as possible. So I will take any suggestions happily. You all just let me know as you are the viewers and the fans. And I appreciate you all if you're watching this right now. Let's keep moving forward though. Let's take on the Spartans and see if we move to 2 0. So without further ado, let's get it started, y'all. As you can see, the 81 to 83 overall differential. We are evenly matched with this team, so we cannot sleep. We damn near played a perfect game against Michigan in the big house. If one or two things don't go our way, there's a very high chance that Michigan comes back in that game. So we cannot afford a letdown against this San Jose State team. They got our number on defense. They got our number overall. It's going to be up to Ella B and that Broncos offense to set the tone. For the home opener, we'll be debuting the brown and white color. Combo. And to make sure that we're not clashing too much, I went ahead and gave the Spartans a gold helmet. But those are the uniform matchups for this one. Now that we got that out of the way, let's hop into this game. I'll see y'all on the loading screen. Oh, hey, Aiden Hutchinson. How you feel about last week? Caleb Williams just showed up there, who today just announced that he's going to follow Lincoln Riley to USC. Yet another reason that I wanted to make sure to extend the quarter length. We only allowed 52 rushing yards to Michigan last week. There is no way that that Hassan Haskins-led squad does not shred us in real life. But besides that, these numbers don't matter too much. We're both 1-0. and We've played one game. What does it matter? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, this is kind of groovy, though. Hey. It's a dark and stormy night, but a bright and shiny day. The world is upside down and I'm feeling okay. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful day for Bronco football here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We have won the coin toss and are going to elect to kick. But let's get into the action, y'all. First things first, gonna get that pregame scouting out of the way. Let's check out the San Jose State team. Led by senior quarterback Nick Starkle, this San Jose Spartans offense is going to be decent. Coming in with an 86 overall. Bad speed, but good agility. 82 awareness will get the job done. Let's take a look at his throwing attributes. 90 throw power, okay, and 82 throw accuracy. So he can definitely beat us with his arm. But does he have the weapons to do so? Let's take a look at this running back room first. Tyler Naveen's coming in with an 85 overall. He's another senior himself. Also not very speedy though, only 78 speed. Kyrie Robinson will pose more threats if they ever do any triple option looks. But besides that, 78 speed. What's his strength looking at? 77, okay, decent. His agility is good though and his acceleration is good as well. He's got a good break tackle rating and 88 elusiveness as well. He's a very, very solid running back. Don't know much about him in the real life. Don't know much about the San Jose State team. I just know that the Western Michigan Broncos thumped them in real life in this home opener. Isaiah Hamilton's the highest overall in 81. Also, not some game-changing speed here. That is really refreshing to see. 84, 84, 86, 88, 82, 81. I'm not scared of that. Agility ratings are all really good, though, and their acceleration ratings are good. Highest awareness in the wide receiver room is an 80. Okay. Got some relatively elusive prospects here as well. Some good spin and juke move ratings for this Isaiah Hamilton guy. Looks like he'll be pretty dangerous after the catch. And I mean, he's going to have to catch the ball first because 78 rating seems to be the highest rating of all receivers here. 
I can't even talk that much trash, though, because what's our catch rating? That's quarterback. That was scary for a second. <laughs> our highest catch rating is Sky Moore, who's got a 79. Yeah, we're pretty much in the same boat. Can't even hate. Spec catch, nothing special. Catching traffic, also nothing special. This receiver prospect does not scare me. He'll get the job done, and the quarterback can definitely get the ball to him, but he's definitely not going to be the one that beats us. Got a solid tight end. He's not super speedy, but speedy enough for a tight end. 84 overall. His awareness is pretty good. Let's see what else he's got. Catching at 82, okay. Yeah, he's definitely going to be the security blanket then. All of his catch attributes are pretty dang good, so he's 100% a receiving tight end. I saw Jack Snyder in their game preview. He's going to be holding it down. The senior with an 86 overall at left tackle. 86 strength and 86 awareness. That's great to see for the Spartans, but not great to see for the Broncos. And then his pass block, run block, and interior blocking are all 87 above. So he'll definitely be locking down the left tackle position. Left guard, 75 overall. Center, 82. Right guard, 83. And their right tackle, a 77. Their left end is kind of scary. Villiami? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Villiami, 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 somebody fact check me on that, but Fehoko, don't know if I'm pronouncing that either, but he's a scary, scary prospect, an 87 overall as a sophomore, don't even want to know what this guy's going to become, he's already got 88 agility, 88 acceleration, 87 awareness as a sophomore, wow. His block shedding's 88, pursuit 86, 85 play rec. Our offensive line is definitely going to have their hands full taking care of this guy. And with him having such a high overall, I can only assume that he's a real-life pro prospect down the line. Um, again, have not followed this team at all, so he could have led the entire country in sacks for all I know. But looking elsewhere, their other right end solid as well, an 83 overall, Cade Hall. None of these D linemen are people that are going to change our game plans, but definitely going to be something to think about. Their senior left outside linebacker is pretty decent, 86 pursuit, and check this out. AD zone coverage for a linebacker. That's pretty good. The middle linebacker is going to be the guy that we have our hands most full with on this entire defense, though. 89 overall, the senior. 88 awareness. He doesn't have game-changing speed at 72, but let's see what the rest of his ratings look like. 88 tackle. That's definitely good. 79 hit power. 79 power move. 77 finesse move. 84 block shed and 85 pursuit, along with 88 play rec and some decent zone coverage and man coverage abilities as well. He does not seem quite as daunting as that 89 overall suggested, but he's still definitely going to be a problem in the middle. Their final outside linebacker here is another senior. Some pretty all right ratings here. Was that 75 speed? Okay, but 88 agility and 88 acceleration is a little scary. I still like the Bronco offense over this defense. And they do have a decent corner at 86 overall. Nehemiah Shelton, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but another redshirt senior. He's definitely going to be something to think about throwing the long ball with Caleb Ellaby. I love that nobody has higher than 86 speed in this defensive backfield, but they all have pretty damn good acceleration. 83 awareness for that senior corner who's a stud. Let's see what else the cover ratings look like. He's also got pretty good tackle. Looks like he could have been a good safety. But let's check out these coverage abilities, and wow. Nehemiah Shelton here has 92 man coverage and 94 zone coverage, along with 94 press. So if he is following Sky Moore around, I might have to think twice about that. Kenyon Reed here, not to be outshone, also has 87 and 86 coverage abilities. These guys are solid. They're definitely not all-American caliber, at least not all of these guys. But they'll definitely get the job done. They'll make it a little bit tougher on this Broncos offense. As we see Jay Leonard here with an 85 overall. They're starting free safety. Also not a ton of speed. What are his coverage abilities look like? Tackle 77. Okay, that's fine. I'll take that. And then his man is 82 and his zone 88. So again, solid coverage abilities pretty much all around here. Let's see what the strong safety is looking like. 87 and 81 respectively all in all though what i'm seeing here is that this san jose state team is pretty dang solid across the board we cannot take them lightly if we do it'll be the last thing we do no i'm being a little dramatic there but we cannot take them lightly for sure if we want to win this game we need to be playing our best football throughout and with that everybody i'm sure you're sick of hearing my voice and would like to see some actual football so let's get it started how about that let's kick off our very first home game in this series with a boom. How about that? Mihalik kicking off. The Broncos in Waldo Stadium are rocking right now. Let's get it started. Here we go. Western Michigan football on the menu starting now. And a touchback is the first thing we get. So here comes that San Jose State team. The offense coming out. Nick Starkle, who had 281 yards last week, throwing it 48 times. Wow. With zero touchdowns. Let's see if we can contain him today. All right, we're coming out in a cover one right now with the QB spy. Let's see how this first play goes here in Waldo Stadium. Ooh, and it's an outside run with a lot of space there. A missed tackle there by Carter. As Tyler Nevins there 
gets 13 yards and a first down for the Spartans. This SJSU team has some pretty sick uniforms. Might have to do a rebuild with them one day. But here we go, another first down here. I'm using Fayad. And right up the middle, there goes Nevens again. I need to figure out how to pronounce his name because it sounds like I'm going to be saying it a lot. Another first down there for the Spartans. Here we go, Broncos. Another first down. Fayad trying to get free of that block. He cannot. He gets there very late, but it is no luck. Good thing that Dorian Jackson was there in coverage because it is now second down. I was a little bit worried there. I was going to get an animation and accidentally hit the quarterback late. Thankfully, didn't get that. But here comes a second and ten. It's going to be an option. Fayad is not fooled by it one bit. So I get that user tackle. And a third down coming up for the Spartans. They are in Western Michigan territory coming up at almost our 45-yard line. Wow, they're going wide here. Empty gun. Let's see if we can get some pressure on him, though. Doesn't matter. Corvin moment, a fantastic tackle there. And we're getting a fourth down here on this first drive. A huge, huge stop by the Broncos. I would not put a fake punt past them. But let's see if they end up kicking it deep. Looks like they're gonna. It's gonna be a fantastic kick, actually. Thankfully, that did bounce through the end zone. So it's a first and 10 from the Broncos 20. And we're gonna draw up a play right here immediately for the hero of last week's game, for Sean Tyler. Let's see if we can get anything going on this halfback screen. And before I can even get the pass off, Ellaby is under pressure and goes down for a loss of nine on that sack. He was just completely unguarded, and I understand that that is the concept of a halfback screen. But Sean Tyler wasn't quite open just yet. And if I had had one more second, that would have been a gain of at least 10 yards there. I'm sure of it. Did not want to be forced into five wide this early, but I'm going to try to hit either Crooms here on the curl or see what Sky Moore is doing downfield. Looks like he's got only one safety covering him. I'm just going to let it deep for Sky Moore. I might end up regretting it. Ooh, and I could have. I very well could have. We are lucky for that to have been an incomplete pass right there. But we are not lucky in the sense that we still have to convert 19 yards here in order to get a first down. Could not get anything going in that vertical passing game here. But trying it again. Once again, going to just eye Sky more. You know what? I'm going to give him a curl this time. Let's see what goes. Let's see how this goes. Nothing crazy, but if Sky Moore can break that tackle, as he cannot, it's only going to be a gain of 15. We got a fourth down coming up. Decision time. I preached about not taking this team lightly, and for that very reason, we are going to punt, even though my instinct was to go for it there. I'll let y'all know that. We're just too deep in our territory to give them some positive momentum. Let's see if we can get a good punt here, and we will not regret it. The announcer says it's an excellent punt. Depends on the coverage, though. As Reed gets a pretty nice block there and returns it for 13 yards, San Jose State's going to have decent field position for this next possession. We're going to blitz here. I'm going to be using Corvin Moment because it's a fake QB draw. And Deshaun Bustle cannot make the tackle there. A 19-yard gain for the Spartans and a first down. Corvin Moment's going to be blitzing here again. A first and 10 for the Spartans. Let's see what they do with it. Looks like it's an option as Corvin Moment makes a terrific tackle there. Only a one-yard gain there. We'll take that anytime. Okay. Waldo Stadium getting okay, loud for the okay. second and nine. Oh, I completely messed up yeah. there on Fayad, but we forced a fumble and the Broncos recover. And it works out because Fayad is in prime position to pick it up. And are you kidding me? The Broncos are going to score on a scoop and score. What just happened? Full disclosure, I just accidentally pressed hit stick way early there, so Fayad was in a terrible position. But he ended up being in a fantastic position to pick up the ball and not just dive after it, but scoop it up and return it for a touchdown. Is it going to stand? Yeah, there is no review. And wow, what a way to get the first points of the ball game. Unbelievable. And Ali Fayad has a touchdown. The Bronco fans are fired up and rightfully so. So it was an option all the way. Looks like a speed option there. Let me hide this. And <laughs> check out Ali Fayad over here. Come Again, totally whiffed. Like the ball was snapped and I accidentally pressed hit stick right away. So I am face first on the ground, panicking, trying to get over to the ball. And so at this point, I believe that I'm using Andre Carter. I do my best to just blow up the speed option, so I stop him right there and dive to force the fumble. And now Ali Fayad over here, who was freshly coming off the ground, sees that ball, 
picks it up, and that is a 50-yard scoop and score. Wow. One more look here, just following the ball. Wow. Just, I mean, that was 50% luck, if not more. But I did force that fumble. And maybe I was just big branding that whiff on the hit stick, and it was all planned out. Yeah, totally. Either way, 7 nothing Broncos, let's go. And with an unconventional first seven points of the game, the Broncos are already kicking off again. Mahala kicking it deep. Wow, I'm still stunned. Broncos defense swirling around early. As you can see Marcus Perez, Brennan hyping up his team right there. What a way for Ali Fayad to announce himself to the national scene. Is he still out on the field? Probably getting some oxygen after that big one. Here come the Broncos again on a new fresh set of downs for the Spartans. Andre Carter will have none of that. A loss of two and a second and 12 coming up. Going to bring some heat here on this second and 12. Going to have A.J. Thomas blitzing. Let's see if he can get there in time. No. And a great play call by the Spartans right there as he's got some open field. And San Jose State gains 36 yards. Dominic Mazzotti there on the option play. If I had flipped that play and had A.J. Thomas blitzing on the other side like I'm going to have right here, that play could have been a little bit different. As A.J. Thomas gets there for a loss of three. A fantastic tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And he makes up for it right there. I guess he was listening. What a play by A.J. Thomas there. Going completely opposite field as the run was on the other side. Second and 13 coming up here for the Spartans. Let's see what the Broncos can do. Corbin Moman gets stuck on a block there. But it doesn't matter. A loss of three. And we've got a third and 16. We're going single coverage across the board. Let's see what we can do here on this third and 16. It is a screen. Can Fayad break that tackle in time? No, he can't. Doesn't matter. That could have been a lot worse. A gain of six for the Spartans and a fourth and 11 coming up. And for the second time today, the Spartans are going to punt inside the Broncos territory. This time, it is a lot better punt than the first. I don't know exactly where that went out, but we'll see in a second. Turns out the punt went out of bounds before the 20 even, so a touchback would have been better there. As the Broncos are going to start at the 21 yard line. And finally, we get another look at this Broncos offense. It's going to be a run to Tyler on the left side here. See if he can get that outside. He can. Honestly, probably could have kept going out and gotten more yards, but we'll take those four for sure. I tried to zigzag there a little bit to try to help the blocker pick up the defender there. Didn't work out. That's fine. You win some and you lose some. Brett Borski, a big first down here on second and six as he shoved out of bounds after a gain of 30. By the way, I will take full responsibility for calling Brett Borski Brett Borsk all of last game. Like I told y'all before, I'm still getting familiar with this team myself. Even though I watch them, I don't know this entire roster in and out like I need to to be the head coach. So Brett Borski, if you're out there somewhere, I apologize for getting your name wrong last time. But I hope you accept that apology and that huge first down right there. And let me tell you, that won't be the last time I target you this game. Gonna get a read option here. LB and Tyler the options. It's gonna be a keeper all the way. Can we pick up that block? Ooh, yes we can. It's a first down right there. 11 yard rush for Caleb Ellaby. Buster Bronco is feeling it. I like that outside look that we got a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna do a halfback toss to the left here for Tyler. Let's see if it's there. First and 10 from inside the Spartans territory. Ooh, and yes, what a perfect, ooh. Sorry, butcher my words there, got a little excited. That was a fantastic cutback, but could not get that edge with the acceleration. We'll still take that eight yard gain any day of the week though. We're gonna run it right up the middle right here. I just wanna get this first down and not worry about it. I trust Caliendo to get the push. This will likely be the last play of the first quarter. Can Tyler get that first down? Yes, he can. But at the end of the first, officially it is seven to nothing. I am happy with that. Hopefully the offense can tack onto the lead right now. What a roller coaster of a first quarter that was, as Ali Fayad single-handedly is outscoring both teams right now. We're officially about the 20 and a half yard line right now. We're going to be doing a mid-screen here for Sky Moore. This play always makes me nervous. Sometimes it can go for a big loss. Not this time. That should be a pretty good gain. If he can break that tackle, he cannot. We'll take that though. Seven yards. Caleb Elby was kind of an afterthought in the Michigan game as we were focused on the defense suffocating the Wolverines. Here comes a big second and three. Brett Borski, oh, it's overthrown by Caleb Elby. He had some pressure there. But as I was saying, Caleb Elby was kind of an afterthought in that last game as it was mostly a ground and pound football game. But we're going to need to rely on him to make some plays, including here where I don't like any of these looks. So I think I'm actually going to get Sky Moore to do this outside route. Hopefully one of our two main guys is open. 
Oh, what a terrible throw, but Corey Crooms gets there. Knocked over my mic in excitement. Wow, what a fantastic adjustment there by Corey Crooms. Take a look at this replay if they're going to show it. Of course they're not. Look at this play by Corey Crooms. It was completely underthrown. I was relying on him getting the outside to the corner of the end zone, but he did not get there. Maybe there was some more pressure there. I'm not very sure. But a fantastic adjustment by Corey Crooms. Look at this. I was hoping that he'd take that left, plant that right foot right there and go to that left corner. It would have been wide open, except extremely underthrown. The corner ends up making a pretty good adjustment. But you know who made the best adjustment? Corey Crooms comes back to the football. Catches it very low. How is this caught? How is this caught for a touchdown? I'm not complaining. It's a touchdown either way. The Bronco fans are ecstatic, and I'm even more so. The first Corey Crooms touchdown of the year is we've got a booth review here. Oh, are they saying it hit the ground? It might have hit the ground. I don't know. Well, what's the official ruling? It stands. It's a touchdown. We'll take it. Had to uh, swallow my pride there momentarily, um, but it counts. And now I can officially say, I believe that is Corey Kroom's first touchdown of the year. Caleb Ellaby's second. I know he threw one to Sean Tyler last week. But with this extra point up and good, the Broncos have a 14-point lead in their home opener. Looking good so far. After another touchback, the Broncos' defense is coming back out on the field. No sacks yet, but they have made their presence felt. That is for sure. Luis Pazito drawing up a blitz here on this first down. We're going to get another A.J. Thomas blitzing play here. I'm going to user him on this one. Let's see if we can blow this up. Oh, and it's a handoff up the middle. Can't get there. Didn't have the qu quite the angle as another missed tackle leads to a big first down run there. 14 yards for Tyler Nevins. Final ruling, I'm pronouncing the running back for San Jose State as Nevins from now on, okay? I'll have some semblance of consistency. As it's a jet sweep here, Andre Carter is having none of that. Another tackle for loss, a three-yard loss, and a second 13 coming up from the Spartans. Cover two blitz here on second and 13 is going to mean a corner is coming. I'm going to be using Coleman here. On the blitz. Can I get to the quarterback? I completely missed. Oh, that was all me. I totally whiffed there. An eight-yard gain where that otherwise could have been one to two-yard gain. That's disappointing. But a third and five coming up nonetheless. Going to have a cover two man. Man across the board. Going to have a QB spy here as well in this third and five. Fayad, can he get some pressure going finally? Does not quite get to the quarterback. Actually powers through alignment to get there. And a big gain there for San Jose State. And a first and 10 from the Western Michigan 35 now. The Spartans have been able to move the ball at least a little bit. This is at least the third time that they're in our territory. As they continue to move the ball. A 16-yard reception there on first down. But this Broncos defense is bending and not breaking right now, which you love to see. Here comes another blitz with Coleman. Not going to get there, so I'm going into coverage. Doesn't work out. Second and 10. We'll take that in completion. I'm watching out for a run here. It's going to go right up the middle. Oh, it's going to the right. Oh, and he breaks somebody's tackle there. Breaks somebody's ankles there. And a first and goal coming up from the Spartans on a power run there. Big goal to go situation here. Let's see how the Broncos manage. I don't like Fayad in coverage here. We don't need that many people. Yep, could have used his body. Doesn't matter. We'll take that negative two yard gain. Corvin moment came flying in there. Going to get another corner blitz here on this second and goal. Good thing, too, because it's going to the left and a two-yard loss again. Negative four yards in the last two plays here for San Jose State. We've got a big third and goal coming up from about the 15-yard line. Huge third down coming up. They're closer to the 12-yard line. Here come the Spartans. And the, ooh, a sack is broken there. He's got all kinds of time to throw. Not the second time around, though. Wow. I was a little nervous there, but Darren Coleman makes a terrific sack there on his second effort. Fourth and goal. What a stop by the Broncos. I'm assuming they're going to kick a field goal now. A lot of missed tackles so far, but it has worked out in our favor because it is 14-0. And here comes a field goal for San Jose State. It is up and good. The only positive of allowing a score is a Sky Moore kick return. And here we go. Let's see if he can make some magic happen. Sky Moore can't quite get around the edge. Yes, he does, actually. And a big return there of 42 yards. I thought he was going to get pushed out of bounds, but he stayed in. 
He did a little tiptoeing, and it worked out. Some great starting field position for the Broncos coming up. Originally came out here with a triple option look, but I did not like that run formation. So we're going to see if Sky Moore can get open deep here. If he's open quick, I'm just going to hit it to him. I'm just going to throw it deep, see if he can get to that ball. And he cannot. A bad decision. What a play there by the corner. And the first mistake by Caleb Ellaby this season. His first interception on the year. Trust me, you're going to see more of those. I do not pretend to be some kind of NCAA god. Big change in momentum here now, though, as the Spartans get the ball right back. First and 10 here from about the 30. Fayad blows that play up. What a hit on the quarterback. It's been about a 50% success rate with A.J. Thomas blocks. Here comes another one with A.J. Thomas blitzes, pardon me. Can't get there, and what a hit by Deshaun Bustle out of bounds. My goodness. And the third and inches coming up for San Jose State. Inches away from a first down are the Spartans here. But while those stadiums getting loud, can we stop them short? They're passing it. It worked out. Dorian Jackson can't make the play. Ooh. I was hoping we'd be able to hit stick him and not allow him to get that first down. Does not work out, but such is life. First and 10 coming up for San Jose State. Carter can't quite get there. Lovely, the corner here is going to blitz on this play. Second and 10 coming up. Ooh, and a nice push by the offensive line of San Jose State there. An eight-yard gain, and we've got third down coming up once again. Waldo Stadium getting loud once again for another big third down here. Coleman's coming off the edge for the blitz, and it's a beautifully designed blitz as we stop Nick Starkle for a four-yard loss on third down, and we've got a fourth down coming up. Broncos are going to take a timeout so San Jose State does not waste any more time, and we're going to get the ball back before half. A fantastic punt there by San Jose State. Who is this guy? And that's going to pin us pretty far back. But I like this screen play design we're about to have here. Let's see if the defense looks good for it. Yeah, we're going to try this out here. It's going to be a sneak screen here for Sean Tyler. Let's see if we can get him the football. And we do. Don't get sacked that time. And run right into a San Jose State player pretty dang quick. Only a gain of one. And we're going to play kind of chicken with this clock here because we don't want to give them too much time left. But we still want to try to score here if we can. So we're going to come out here in four verts. No timeouts, though. Just going to accelerate our pace of play. And Sky Moore is wide open. You can't do that. Cannot do that, San Jose State. Because now we get the ball back and now we're moving. We'll get some hurry-up offense going here. Try to save those timeouts. It's going to be a rollout pass here. Bryce Nunley is wide open. And he dropped it. Oh, that was certainly a first down, and if he could turn up fielder, that could have been six. That's tough. That is real tough. This puts us in a predicament now that if we throw an incomplete pass, it's a third and ten, and San Jose State still has all three timeouts. So I'm going to do some curl action here, try to get one of our two outside receivers, Crooms, or more of the football. See how lax his coverage is. Lacks enough for Crooms to make the catch, but he cannot. Incomplete. I don't even want to know if Skymore was open. He probably was. Going to play this a little conservative. Want to make sure we can just at least burn some kind of clock here. Or at least make San Jose State use a timeout. So we're going to use a read option. If it pops, it pops. Otherwise, they have to stop the clock. Tyler can't get... I was hoping to be able to get around there, but he cannot. Only a two-yard gain. And San Jose State does use that timeout. And they're going to get the football back because the Broncos cannot do anything there. And so the Spartans have 44 seconds and two timeouts to try to make some noise. Immediately, they're going empty gun. Here comes that first and 10. Great tackle there by Lovely. Great play. Forces the incomplete pass. And it's a second and 10 with 40 seconds remaining. Looks like they have two clock on, so it's not even going to matter. Is this the last play of the half? They don't even get it off. And we're going into halftime up 14 to 3. Would like to have had a little bit more of a cushion, but we'll definitely settle for this. We're also getting the ball to start the second half, so that is huge. Caleb Ellaby had a up and down first half. He got sacked. He threw an interception, but he also threw a touchdown pass. The Broncos' defense is stifling so far. We've allowed the Spartans to march into our territory several times, but we have not allowed a touchdown yet. We allowed one field goal. And look at that. They are almost doubling us in time of possession. Have more passing and rushing yards than us. And we're up 11. And going to get the ball back. That's awesome. Definitely going to want to establish the run in the second half. We cannot have only 22 rushing yards going into halftime against this team. So expect a lot more options. And then hopefully that will open up the play action pass as well. But to start the second half, we've got Sky more deep once again. Let's see if we can get a crease and return this back for six. <laughs> Somebody missed an assignment there, but it doesn't matter for Sky Moore. Look at that stutter step. Got him there. 
Another 42-yard gain, and he is just electric with the football. We need to get the ball in his hands more often. As promised, first play of this half will be a triple option. Let's see if it's a good look for it. Yeah, we'll take this. This might end up being Ladarius Jefferson's first carry of the game. And it is. He's got some space up the middle. We'll take that. Eight yards. All right. We're going to get another option here. Just a straight up read option this time. It's going to be another handoff to Jefferson. And he's got some more space. A first down for the Broncos. Going to go with the play action power row here. This is always a good look. Hopefully we can get Sky more deep. If not, Brett Borski should get a good chunk. And if that doesn't work out, hopefully Corey Crooms is cutting across the field and is open. Looks like I'm going for that Borski pass. That was intended for Borski, but it ends up in the hands of Sky Moore, who takes it all the way down to the five-yard line. Maybe that should have been a Sky Moore initially. And wow, that, quite frankly, was a missed throw by Caleb Ellaby, but luckily Sky Moore came back to the football, and a huge 39-yard gain has the Broncos set up at the six-yard line. Controversially, we're going five wide here from the six-yard line. Just going to see if we can get a quick score. Oh! Oh, and a back-breaking interception. That was just a stupid, uh, that was stupid. That was all me. Should not have thrown that. Should have done an option, and I'm already kicking myself. A mind-numbingly stupid play call there. We had the option going, and I just killed that huge momentum we had. Sorry, Sky Moore, to take that thunder away from you, but I trust this Broncos defense to get us the ball right back. But yeah, it cannot get anything going against these blockers. And another first down here for Nevins. Man, I am still kicking myself over that interception. How stupid. I thought, hopefully, that that was just going to get lofted up. And if our receiver couldn't catch it, then nobody would. That's not a good excuse, though, because I shouldn't have drawn up that play in the first place. Lovely coming under pressure. A deep hit, a late hit, and Deshaun Bustle, with a toe-tapping interception, gets us the ball right back. The former receiver showing his prowess for toe-tapping catches. Are you kidding me? What a pick. And the pressure was brought there by our DB blitzing. Wow. And we get the ball right back. We're going right back to the passing game here. Time for LB to make up for his mistake. It got us to the six-yard line. Hopefully he can get a six this time. Brett Borski, wide open. That's who I thought I was throwing to the last time. Buster, still loving it. Still want to maintain balance, so we're going to go for a read option right here. Unless Sky Moore's got one-on-one -on -one over there. That might change things up. I'm audibling out of this, giving Sky Moore a go route here. Let's see if this works out. Oh, he's wide open. A bad throw, but it doesn't matter. Sky Moore brings it down, and that is another touchdown for the Broncos. That is the third pass that I can remember today. That was a missed throw by Caleb Ellaby that ended up working out magnificently in our favor. And just like that, what interception at the goal line? What interception? The Broncos take a 21-3 lead now. What a response by the defense and what a response by Caleb Ellaby to go down and throw a touchdown right after throwing that interception. This Bronco defense is playing possessed so far these first two weeks of the season. They have far surpassed my expectations. And to be completely honest, I think I need to work more on the offense here than the defense. And I thought it was going to be the complete inverse. But a first and 10 coming up for San Jose State from their own 25-yard line. Let's see what the Broncos defense can do here. Andre Carter forces the handoff there on the option. Three yards there for Kyrie Robinson. It's the first time he's touched the football. Bring some pressure here on second and seven, because why not? We're aggressive. I'm going to use her moment here. Did not work out very well. A big gain there for San Jose State. Ten yards for Nevins and a first down. We've had some good luck with the DB blitzes so far in this game. Here comes another one. I'm going to use her lovely on this one. Woo! Lucky that wasn't an offside. Cannot quite get there. And left wide open is Isaiah Hamilton. But he did not get his feet down. So an incomplete pass on what could have been a gain of at least 40 there. Oh no. And they're reviewing it. I think this is a catch. Let's see the slow-mo look. Oh, his foot's fully down. And he got two. That is an NFL catch. Ruling on the field is reversed. And a huge gain for the Spartans there. Wow, that is a big switch of momentum. I was certain we'd gotten away with that, but we did not. 
And now the Spartans are going to have the ball at our 30-yard line. Let's see what the Bronco defense can do. A nice run there by Starkle, six-yard gain. Second and four for the Spartans at about the 25-yard line of the Broncos. <sighs> My tackling is not ideal right now. Big third down coming up here. What is this? Okay. And it is blown up by the Broncos there. I had zero part of it, but Corvin Moman is there for a tackle for loss. A fourth and five coming up for the Spartans. That is a huge play by this Broncos defense. Big decision time here for the Spartans, and they're going to kick a field goal. So the Spartans elected to kick it, and they got the three points. I'm not sure if I agree with that call, but I am not their head coach. As here we go with Sky Moore again returning this kick. Can he get some breathing room? Not quite, but we'll still take that 31-yard gain. First and 10 for the Broncos offense coming up, up 15. I guess kicking a field goal there did accomplish making it a two-possession game once again. But they're going to need a two-point conversion if they're going to want to get back in this game. As I'm audibling around right now, it's going to get Crooms and Moore going deep. Let's see if we can get them. Bad, bad decision. That could be picked again. That should have been picked again. I am just taking risks that I shouldn't. That could have very easily been LB's third interception of the game. Let me get back to our identity. I've strayed away from it. Let's go to this option attack and see what we can get going here. Second and 10 from our own 26. The triple option look. LB's going to pitch that to Jefferson. Unfortunately, could not get that extra block. We'll take five yards. Third and five coming up. I almost just drew up a trick play. It was going to be the halfback pass. I don't know if I have that level of confidence in execution right now. So we're just going to do a halfback screen here to Tyler. See if we can get him the football and have him do the rest. And he's got some space here, Tyler. Thought I might be able to juke back in towards that block. Couldn't quite. But we'll take that first down, that gain of 12 as we convert that third down. First and 10 for the Broncos. Haven't gone up the middle in a little bit. Going to give Caliendo a chance to shine. Here's the inside handoff to Ellaby. Oh, not Ellaby. That's Tyler. Ellaby hands it off to Tyler and gets a 12-yard gain. A first down for the Broncos. We are moving the football. Going to get a read option going to the left side here. See what we can get. He's got some space here if this is a keeper for Ellaby. Let's see. Of course, our blockers do nothing. A fantastic juke there by Ellaby and slides for the first down. A little bit of a highlight play there. All around, Ellaby's still having a good game. Those two interceptions, of course, I wish I could admit from his stat line. But he has orchestrated this lead so far and will hopefully continue to do so. See if we can get Sky Moore on this curl. Otherwise, I'm going to look for Nunley here. Maybe one of the three receivers on the right, if they're going deep. Bad, bad, bad decision. I saw my life flash before my eyes. I tried to switch the throw, but it was too late. I had already pressed square. That could have been disastrous. Once again, getting bailed out there. Let's just keep running the football. That's working. I don't know why I keep going away from it. Of course, it's more exciting to throw a long bomb for a touchdown. But if we can just run it down their throats, that is also awesome. As Tyler... Makes a terrific move to the outside, and he's got space. And he's cutting back in for a touchdown. What an electric run by Sean Tyler, who so far has been the star of this offense this season. Look at this cut. Heads to the outside, gets that corner, and of course, they cut away from it. I don't know why. That was a beautifully executed run. Let's see this replay. Let's just look at this play and the vision by Sean Tyler. Ellaby hands it off. Look at this. He is dead in the water here, Tyler is. He's got at least four Spartans in his area. But he decides to break outside, gets the angle. I was a little nervous about his acceleration here, but he makes it pay off. Sky Moore picking up the block downfield. He cuts right back towards the left. Beautiful, beautiful pickup there by Sky Moore. Avoids that last second tackle. And wow, what an amazing play there by Sean Tyler. I'm still kind of in shock here. We've got some tremendous individual performances in this game so far. And the Broncos, more importantly, now take a 21-point lead and could go up 22 with this extra point. It's looking good so far, but we have got to keep our foot on the gas. That does not look safe. Mahala kicks it deep. This one actually might not be a touchback. That's a nice change of pace. Oh, a good return here by San Jose State, though, as he breaks two tackles, reverses field. That could have been a lot worse than it ended up being, but still a solid return there by San Jose State. As they get the ball back, down 22, it is time for their offense to wake up. I'll be using Ryan Seelig here. He gets blocked. Six-yard gain there for Tyler Nevins. Second and four coming up here. 
Oh my goodness, another missed tackle. I clearly need to do some tackling practice. I am not in tackling shape anymore, evidently. A big game for San Jose State there, and you gotta wonder if that was the last play of the quarter. Looks like they'll get one more off. First and 10 from the Broncos side of the 50 once again. Fayad cannot shed those blocks. Looks like that's going out of bounds, an incomplete pass there. It looks like that was actually ruled a catch, and it was just a gain of nothing. So we're going to the fourth quarter, and with that, we are up 28-6 to heading into the final frame. What a performance in all phases so far by the Broncos. Hopefully we can keep it up in ice this game here in the fourth quarter. Empty gun and five wide here for San Jose State. Big second and ten coming up. Fayad sheds a block that time. Can't do anything past that. Deshaun Bustle with a nice tackle, but it is all for naught, as it is a first down for Isaiah Hamilton there. This game and this score looks a lot different, if not for that Fayad scoop and score. But I'm not complaining. Still up 28-6, to six, and a short little game there for the Spartans. Four yards and a second and six coming up. The clock is now the Spartans' enemy. They got to start thinking about scoring quickly here. What a tackle by Fayad as he zooms into the backfield there and makes the stop for a loss of two. A big third and eight here for the Spartans. The Broncos are going to try to make a stop here as Starkle has all kinds of time. Going deep, and I thought Ware would get there with the interception, but he does not, and it is a bomb for the Spartans. What happened there? I thought Ware was in perfect position to make the play, and he just, he didn't go up for the interception. After that back-breaking third down conversion, the Spartans have the ball at the one-yard line. Hopefully the Broncos can repeat their fashion of bending and not breaking as Fayad makes a terrific play on the speed option there, and a loss of four will definitely help in that bend and not break mentality. I need Corvin Moment to move over here a little bit on this coverage. We all know he's not running that. Just kidding, he did! And he breaks it in for a touchdown. My mic falls again. I mean, it's the story of the game. I'm whiffing on tackles. Otherwise, this Broncos defense has been pitching pretty much a perfect game. But just like that, San Jose State is a two-point conversion away from making this a football game again. Big conversion attempt here. Looks like it's going to be run right up the middle, and we can't do anything about it. It is a 14-point football game. The Broncos offense cannot go to sleep and allow San Jose State back into this football game. We need to make some plays here. I mean, honestly, best case scenario, offense doesn't even have to do anything, and Sky Moore just houses this. But I'm not going to be reliant upon that. Let's see what he can do anyway. Come on, pick up that black. And he did. Pick up another one. Come on, Broncos. Oh, couldn't quite get the angle there, but that is at least the third return to go for 42 or more yards by Sky Moore there. What an electric player he is. And speaking of Sky Moore, if this safety's not playing deep, this is going to be a deep shot to him. Spoiler alert, as he just scooched up. Hmm, interesting. Otherwise, it's going to Borski all the way. He is playing relatively deep. Can that ball get into Borski? What a dime by Caleb Ellaby. And what a snag by Brett Borski. A big first down there for the Broncos. And a gorgeous throw there by Ellaby. Don't know what else to say about that. Caleb Ellaby simply dropped that pass in the bucket where nobody else could catch it. What a throw. And we got a first and 10 coming up now in Spartan territory. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to Tyler. Can he get another block? We'll take that. Four yard gain and we keep milking that clock. We are now over 100 yards rushing. That's awesome. It is safe to say that Sean Tyler has been explosive today. That's seven rushes for 70 yards and a touchdown. Depending on how this coverage is, I'm going to more on this curl. Y'all know that I love that. But I'm kind of scared with some of the coverage schemes they've drawn up this game. Let's see what we're working with here. It is not going to Sky Moore. He was blanketed. It's going to Sky Moore this time. Ooh! Caleb Elby was trying a little too hard to be like Patrick Mahomes there with that scrambling and improvising of the receiver routes. It's all good, though. An almost interception does not go in the stat sheet. We're going to draw up the halfback screen here to Tyler. Going to settle for three points if we can't get anything. Try to make it a three-possession game. Sean Tyler's got a block. Can he get another one? Yes, he can. Sean Tyler, showing why he is one of the most dynamic playmakers on this team. Sean Tyler has now got 99 yards from scrimmage and a touchdown, of course, on the ground. He's been electric so far. I'm going to continue to run this ball. I do not want to make a mistake that the Spartans can capitalize on. And Tyler is the hot hand, so why not continue to feed him? A three-yard gain right there and a second and seven coming up for the Broncos. We're going to get a triple option look here. We're not quite at the two clock territory yet. We want to make this as realistic as possible. Triple option to the left coming up. Ellaby keeps it initially. Going to pass it to Jefferson. Can he break that tackle? No, he can't. It's actually a loss of two. 
Shouldn't have pitched that. Could have gained a couple yards there. And a big third and nine coming up here for the Broncos. Going to go for a straight up wide receiver mid screen here. Again, I don't want to take too many chances. If the corner beats this route, I'm just going to try to throw it away. Otherwise, it's going to try to get the ball to Sky Moore here on a third down. Sky Moore doesn't get much out of that, gets five yards, but that's fine because we are very content in kicking a field goal here and extending the lead to 17. Spartans just took their first time out of the half, leaving them with only two. Didn't want to allow us to drain any more clock, understandably. And here comes a chip shot. Field goal is up and good for Caps. I think that's his second field goal of the season so far as we have a studio update. Kent State! Look at that Mac representation in the studio update. Kent State beats LSU in Louisiana. The Tigers are now 0-2, and looks like Ed O is going to be out the door just like he was in real life. After a short return there, San Jose State's going to start with the ball at the 21-yard line on a drive that they absolutely need to score in. Wow, a fantastic throw and catch there for 16 yards. And they're going hurry up now. It's crunch time. I don't blame them. Let's see how this two-minute defense looks for the Broncos. Starkle goes back. It's going to be a gain of eight. I imagine they're going to continue to do hurry up. Here they go on the second and two. Broncos barely get into their formation. And it shows as Trevon Sidney is wide open there. He's got five catches for 77 yards and a first down, most importantly, right there for San Jose State as he gets out of bounds and also stops the clock. First and ten from the Broncos, 48. Here come the Spartans. Wide open is their receiver there. That might have been their tight end. I'm not even sure there. Terrence Lovell, a 22-yard reception for another first down. And the Spartans are moving. You will never be able to say I'm not aggressive. We're going man across the board and blitzing here. Lovely pays off with the sack. A loss of six yards and a huge play there by the corner. And now the Spartans have to hustle to get to the line. Second and 16 coming up all of a sudden after that sack. And now Andre Carter can't quite get there. Misses the sack. Gets there again to force the incomplete pass. He just throws it out of bounds, Nick Starkle at that point. And a third and 16 for the Broncos. The elusiveness traits that we saw in Nick Starkle before the game started are really showing in this one. He's broken a lot of sacks in this game. More than I've seen the average quarterback do for sure here. But here comes a huge third and 16 in a very, very important play as a true freshman makes perhaps the play of the game there. Lee is in place of Fayad on that play. And look at him just completely shrug off that left tackle's block. And that is their 86 overall left tackle at that. And a huge, huge sack by the true freshman. A fourth and 22 coming up here for the Spartans. What kind of plays do you have in your playbook for fourth and 22? We'll find out. Guessing this is a pass here. Circumstantially. And this time, who is that? I didn't even see who that was, but it's another sack for the Broncos. As we force a turnover on downs, and we're going to walk out of this one with a victory. Game clinching sack there by the Broncos. 94. Who are you? Tell me. Marshawn Neeland, a red shirt sophomore. The backup to Andre Carter, not to be outdone by Tyson Lee, the true freshman who made a huge play in relief of Fayad there. Our main two ends just got gassed on that two minute drill. There's a lot of hurry up for the San Jose State Spartans, so I get it. But look at that. Two massive plays by a true freshman and a red shirt sophomore respectively. I think it's safe to say that the future is looking bright. A first down here will all but ice this game. They still have two timeouts, so we can't kneel it out. But here we go. Let's see if we can get a look here from Tyler. How about a game winning run? A game clinching run. Can you do that for me, Sean Tyler? I think you can, as he's got a hole. Cutting back in and staying in bounds. Beautiful. A 27 yard rush there. And a first down for the Broncos. What a game by Sean Tyler. What a first two weeks by Sean Tyler. San Jose State is not even using their timeouts. So after this play, I'm just going to start kneeing it out, actually. But why not give Tyler one more chance to shine? Can he get one more play to add on to his stat sheet? A gain of one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will ice this football game as Sean Tyler checks in with 10 rushes for 101 yards and a touchdown. Not even gonna have time to get into victory formation here as the Broncos 
are going to walk away with another victory and start this season at 2-0. What a way to start for these Broncos going into a huge showdown against Pittsburgh at Heinz Field next week. Sean Tyler had himself a game, 130 yards and one touchdown as well. This Bronco team is feisty, I'll tell you that much. Still cannot get over that Fayad scoop and score which they're showing there right now. That was an all-time play right there. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, this is kind of groovy though. Hey, 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 hey. It was a dark and stormy night, but a bright and shiny day. The world is upside down and I'm feeling okay. Hey, hey. 